What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Fun with Flags. No, wait, that, no, that's not, hold on. Um, oh, right, right, right. Uh, welcome to another episode of How to Train Your Turtle. That's what it is. I don't know where I got that other one from. That's just weird. Um, yeah, yay. Levels are not that important anymore. <laughs> with all this stuff going on. Wait, is that an Enderman? I heard an Enderman. Okay, so, um, in this episode, let's see, we're going to be working on the, what I have dubbed the beta-base. Right, like a database for bees. And as you can see, it's not connected right now because I'm still working out some of the kinks. Um, I don't know if I actually explained all this in, a early, in the FTB episode or if I just said how it would work, but essentially what I've got here... This is temporary. Actually, all this is temporary. It'll move eventually, but um, for now, I've just got a small tank here that's holding honey, which is going to a stationary analyzer. Um, bees go in here, they get analyzed, they come out here. And this is a pipe that says if there's space for liquid, then uh, use an energy pulser. Now, normally, when this is full, it works off if this has space. But as you can see, it's pulsing right now because this has space. So, it's a 6 to 1 thing because, obviously, it's not, like, overflowing, even though it's still pulsing. It's still just sitting there, so it's not a big deal. Um, and then this one is set to, if it has a redstone signal, energy pulse. And then there's a construction pipe back here with a gate on it that says... And I just used a gold gate because it was what I had lying around, but I would recommend using just a gate. Um, space and inventory... Uh, pulse redstone. Now, the reason I didn't set this to is space and inventory pulse is because I have found that with these gates, if you put them between two inventories, it will check both, much like this one. Um, so this says, you know, if there's space for liquid pulse. This doesn't have space, but this does, so it's pulsing. And that's not what I want, because this would see this inventory is empty, so it needs to pulse or, I mean, space, space in inventory, because if you only put three bees in here, then there's space in inventory, right? So I didn't want that. So you put this over here, and that way you're only dealing with this bee analyzer's space. Um, and if it's empty as it is, it turns this on, which means when a bee hits this, it pulses it. Now, as, as you know, this is a How to Train Your Turtle episode, so we're going to talk about turtles. Now, at the moment, this one's just a wireless turtle. Um, I could probably, if nothing else, I could put a light, a glowstone to light more stuff up, I suppose. Um, so, uh, excuse me. Basically, this little guy here is using this to work with everything. Now, you may recall when I was doing this FTB episode, I placed a computer here and was saying this is how I use it. Well, there's a problem. The problem is this is not an interactive sorter. In the interactive sorters, you could put a computer here and then tell it extract out the south side or east side or whatever, and it would do so. Not with this. This is just a block. So with the computer up here, there was no way to get it to extract unless I put another pipe and then a red zone. It, yeah. So I just was like, I'm going to do a turtle. Because what will happen is when he gets stuff, he spins around and drops it in this relay, and then it goes on to the the rest of the system as you've seen before. Um, now, uh, I'm going to... I was going to move him and talk about it somewhere else, but uh, slimes and stuff seem to be leaving me alone for now. Um, so, let's get right into here. Now, one thing though. Here's, here's, the, here's the issue. Here's what makes this complicated. What I want to happen is this not to be seen, but for this computer or turtle to send the database to a computer somewhere else and then display it on a monitor. Um, which, for those of you who are observant, might have noticed when we started this episode, there was a giant monitor next to my B area here. Right here. Big old monitor. Um, this is for testing. I haven't been able to get this part of the code to work. This might be in another episode. Um, but essentially you've got um, an advanced computer here with a, um, a modem right there. A wireless modem. 
Um, and the theory, now we're, the part that's been screwing me up on this is there's a API in Computercraft called Parallel, and it's basically like multi-threading for all of you programmers out there. Um, it, the idea is it's supposed to be able to run two different functions at the same time, is, is the idea. The problem, so, so my theory and how it's been used a lot in tutorials that I've seen is this very idea is to use it to receive a RedNet signal without tying up the rest of the program. Like you have, you know, RedNet receive is one, and then in another function you have the rest of the program running uh, in parallel. And that way it can constantly be getting updates without, you know, breaking the rest of the script to where it doesn't display anything. So the idea here, and this will be in part two or something, I think. Um, I don't think I'll be able to cover both of these in one episode. Um, but the idea here is that this will display the B database, so it will tell me how many... Okay, I have it set up by species and then by type and then amount. So it would be like river bee and then drone queen princess and then five one zero whatever. You know what happened? I don't know. Whatever. Um, so uh, the reason I'm trying to get the parallel thing to work is because I want it constantly receiving from the turtle out here or wherever I end up putting him and so this would update like every 30 seconds or something and you'd see it change because the this guy got new information kind of thing or didn't and you won't notice a difference but I want it to cycle to where it listens um, for 30 seconds or whatever um, and then <clears throat> if you know, and it'll be set up to just update to where it clears the screen and reprints it, but if, you know, it didn't get any new information, it just won't be any different. But if it does get new information, then, you know, it'll have updated the, the database that's being displayed. That's the idea. Um, this turtle one out here works perfectly. I've got him set up completely the way I want him. So that's what we're going to do in this part. Um... In another part or something later, um, I can I'm going to show where I'm at with the the display part, and for the most part, it's done. I walked through the logic, and it makes sense. I just can't get the parallel thing to work to where once it runs the receive thing, it just hangs up the whole program because it's waiting for a message instead of running in parallel like it's supposed to. So I've got to work with that a bit and see what's going wrong with that. But other than that, that one's done too. Um, so, B database here is just the B database so far, and I'm going to end up clearing it because um, because I've had I've tested it and sent things through, and then it goes back. But I may be pulling them back out and testing it again, so the the numbers are inaccurate. Um, so once this is like okay, we're done, it works. Um, then I'm basically going to clean it, just wipe that file out, and then start over. And I intend to actually, once this is com complete, um, disconnect this part of the beta base um, and connect it to something else, and then basically take all the bees that I have and run it through here, is the idea. Um, so, and then when it runs back into wherever I've moved the B area too, then it will effectively have, you know, analyzed all my bees. So some of this is weird, and I may have to do some tweaking in the display part to fix this. Um, but some of these come up bees.species.valiant. Why, I don't know. Uh, well, not valiant, but I mean, whatever the species, it won't just be valiant sometimes. Sometimes it'll be you know, this bee.species thing. I don't know why. Um, it's probably just their extra bees or some other mod that named theirs differently. Um, but as you can see, the way this works is you've got um, the one index here that's a string, which we've talked about before, I think. Well, we did talk about it in the last episode for generic bee, so yeah, I know you if you, if you watched our stuff then I know you know that one. Um, and then it, it has, what's different though is this is an index and then it has another table inside this, so it's a nested table. And then you have 
Um, right now is princesses equals one, and then if you had drones, you'd have another one of these, and then if you'd have queens, you'd have another one, and they'd be in a table inside the valiant. So you can see how the nested thing makes it really easy to organize it. Um, so like here's diligent, and I've got 32 drones. Um, the And I do have it set up to read if it's a hybrid also. If this were a pure, uh, pure bee, it would just say bauxite, but because it's not, it's bauxite and tarnished. Um, one princess, and that was all that I had. So that's all the BDB file is for. Um, the real meat of it is in the analyze script. So the first thing we do... Um, actually, you know what? I am going to move him, because this isn't running right now. And I'm going to um, plug him into the main big screen up, up in upstairs. Um, uh, oop, boop, boop. Fly. Oh wait, I don't have the. Hmm. Um, yeah, go through here. Actually, you know what? I'm. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go plug him in, and we'll be right back. Much better. Okay. Um. And one more thing. I'm going to turn this off, so it's not in my way. And get it out of my life. Okay. Um, so first thing we do is we wrap the peripheral. In this case, it's the front because um, if you recall, the the um, the turtle was here and the bealizer was right there. So now for some variables, um, the BDB is going to be the table that holds the database. T is a temporary table. I'm not sure if I actually ended up using that or if that was just left there. Uh, excuse me. And then species and class are blank strings. Receive PC is 86. I had this as placeholder, but I think that actually is the number for the um, the main computer in the B room. So I may not have to change that. Um, and the UE function you've seen before, dump bees is it turns around, and if you'll remember the relay was back there. So it turns around, drops, and then turns back around. Fairly simple. Um, whoa, whoa. I still have not quite entirely figured out the whole touch screen mechanics of this, but whatever. Um, so this is where it gets into the actual bealizer. So we wrap the bealizer as a peripheral, but function if b is p dot is b then temporary table equals p.analyze. So these are the two functions the bealizer has, and it checks for if the item in the bealizer or bealizer is a b, it returns true. So if I were to pert, uh, pert if I were to put my drill in there, it, this would return false. Um, and then analyze returns a table with all of the traits. So, and I mean, it's a lot of traits too. I could really make this in depth as far as um, you can it, it's pretty much anything if I were to take my bealizer here and analyze a bee it's pretty much any of that so fertility um, what kind of plant it takes its area of pollination nocturnal cave dwelling you know blah 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 blah, blah all of that um, it would return it into this table now in this particular case all I'm looking for is species and the amount of of things in in the bealizer. Um, so, oh, that was the other issue I had, was the bealizer has no way of telling you how, or at least that I'm aware of, has no way of telling you how many uh, bees is in the bealizer. And so for the computer sitting on top of the bealizer setup that I had initially, the computer has no inventory either, so there's no way for me to find out how many there was. And, and you'll, I'll show you in a second. In this script, what happens is the turtle pulls it in to it, and then it has the slots, so then it gets the item count of that slot. And that's how it figures out how many uh, bees are in the, the bealizer. So basically, if... if um, is a B returns true, then it fills T with the analyzed data and then returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Um, the get class function is uh, declares a blank string um, and then it uses the, the T table and says if T type, again, this is an index that the 
um, the table that comes from the analyze function uses is type defines whether it's a drone or a princess and species primary term is the index used for what kind of species it is and then there's a species secondary which we'll see in a minute so the the analyze table is almost purely string indexes it doesn't use very many numbers if any um, so you'll have to get really comfortable with the concept of strings for indexes of a of an array or a table um, to really code stuff like this because it can be kind of confusing when you when you show people okay a table is a series of variables held in one thing organized by number zero one two three four five six and they're like oh okay and then you're like oh you can use a word and then, what you know so if you're cool with that awesome um, it's it's pretty handy and really useful for doing things like this because it makes things easy to identify other than okay I've got to remember that zero is the type and one is the speed and yeah th this is a way less confusing way to do it once you uh, wrap your head around it um, so basically it takes the type if not equal to nil aka it's not empty um, that was mostly just a precaution thing um, in theory, if there's a if this return true because there's a B and it analyzed, then there should be a type because the Bs all have a type. But you know, it was just a precautionary thing. Um, and then it attaches it to it takes the value and puts it into string um, because type will return a word. I did not use a two string um, statement um, because it'll have a word on you know if you went type equals something it'll be drone or princess but it's already in a string form um, so I just threw it in there and then return string um, so you can put like I would put uh, class equals um, get class type of thing and it would return this string into the class variable that we declared up at the top uh, okay, so then the next step is get species. Same kind of deal here. Um, declare a local string. If species primary is not equal to nil, assign it there. Now this part gets a little tricky. If species secondary is not equal to nil, and species secondary is not equal to species primary, you can't read it all the way over there but that's what it says it says if if this is not equal to that so basically this prevents you from getting river dash river or you know um rocky dash rocky it's like if secondary is the same as primary don't do anything but if secondary is an empty and primary is different then what it does is it takes the original string that we put the primary in up here you know string equals string and then concatenates with the dot dot which if you're not familiar with Lua I'm pretty sure I covered this but I haven't done a, a thorough turtle episode in a little bit so I kind of forget what I've gone over but um, I, I have to remember this because uh, I'm primarily uh, trained in C++ and in C++ you would use plus signs it would be string plus you know and then whatever and that just Lua doesn't like that um, so it's dot dot is con uh, concatenating strings. Um, so you take the original string and then concatenate a dash and then concatenate um, the secondary species, which you saw when we brought up the box site dash tarnish. This is that idea. If this had been box site and box site, it won't do anything because of this line. But because it was box site and tarnished, it adds the first dash and then adds the second. So this will be cool because it'll actually keep track of your hybrids and stuff and keep them in a separate uh, loop area, not loop, um, a separate index of the of the string or of the table. Um, oops, too far. Um, all right, so function check bdb. So check the b database. B database. Um, local not found equals true. So it starts with the not found idea. Um, and then, I don't know if I've covered this or not. I know I did in the last episode, which was the video response for Generic B, but some of you, I don't know, may not have watched that. So, for key, uh, for value in pairs, what this does is, as we talked about, most of the time tables use um, uh, numerical indexes. 
or indices, depending on how proper you're being. Um, and if you were to do like a for loop and just say for i equals zero till the end of the table, right? The loop is going to go forever, basically. I mean, not indefinitely, it will find an end, but it'll take a long time because um, string values are actual numbers. Um, they're uh, it's something called the ASCII codes, which is where, you know, A is, I don't remember the exact situation. I think numbers are first, but I, I think it's zero is zero and one is one and so on. And so like A would be 10 or something like that. I forget how it exactly works. Um, as far as the order and numerical values for everything. But the point is, each letter and, and uh, symbol, parentheses, colons, all that stuff has a numerical value that when you put it into a string, um, a string is just that. It's a string of characters, and each character is a number by, to, to the computer. Um, obviously, to us, we read it and we can see it, but to the computer behind the screens, um, the, the letters are numbers still. So, because letters are still numbers, you can use them as an index for a table because the computer doesn't see anything different. It just sees a big number as opposed to 0 through 5. Um, and so, you can do a for loop of like 0 to the number of elements or the last element in the table. It, it Well, actually no, that would just go by the number of elements so if there was only five elements it would only go up to five so that still wouldn't work but essentially if you did i equals zero to a million or something right um it would eventually find anything <coughs> any combination of of numbers which turned into words um as long as they're under a million, but it would take forever because it's got to go through a million different loops. Now, what key value in pairs does is it basically says key is going to be the index, value is going to be what's on the other end of the equal sign. So, for example, you saw when we pulled up the, um, the beta base. So, in this particular instance, you would have bees.species.valiant is key and then um, the other table would be the the um, the value now you're not going to get anything directly out of that but then when you search this table for key and pairs princess becomes the key and one becomes the value which is where you're actually finding what you're what you're looking for and we'll show you that in a second here as I break this down and in pairs basically pairs up the key and the value. Now, it's important to note, there is a function called iPairs, and it basically is um, iterative in that it goes from the first one to the, it goes in order. The problem with iPairs is it doesn't work well for string um, indexes either because iPairs goes um, numerically from the one to the next until it can't find the next one. So if there's 0, 1, 2, and then you added 1 to 5, it'll go 0, 1, 2, and then stop because there is no 3 and 4 to get to 5. So you don't want to use I pairs for strings either. Um, so pairs, the only problem with pairs is that it's not exactly in the proper order. Um, so as an example, we might get the... Um, uh, the bauxite tarnished, then the valiant, and then whatever this one is over here, um, the diligent. So you'll get all the correct values, like all of their values will be linked to that key, but you, you get them in random order. So that's, if you're being real picky about the organization of a table or something, uh, you'll have to keep that in mind, but it's still one of the best ways to get through string indices um, for tables. Um, and it will go through when you put um, it's the key values for BDB um, when you put that in the parentheses it's like that's the table I want the pairs to look for um, so it will go from it, it will find all of the entries basically is, is what I'm trying to say like um, it may be out of order but it will find every key and pair or key and value pair. Like, um, it would find all three of these in here eventually. It just might not be in the exact order you see them in. Um, so the first thing we do is we're in this loop. 
and then we say if to string key which converts the key over here back to a string is equal to to string species um, so species is uh, what okay this this is this is set up to where it's run after we've already assigned species so we've already called the get species command so it checks the the key it's basically checking the database that's already here to see if it has a key that's already equal to that species if it is it means that kind of B is already in the database um, so if that's true then it goes BDB um, species and then class which is like we talked about so this would be um, diligent or what was it? the valiant and then princess as we've seen in there and is not equal to nil AK um, it's uh, if it if it has something in there already if that's an established section then um, not found equals false because we found it and then we break out of this loop right um, otherwise, if this is nil, it means it's either uh, it means this this particular class of this species is not in the database yet and needs to be added, um, which is a different function. So we break out of this. Otherwise, again, like I just said, if if this is empty, then not found equals true. Um, there, I also put another else out of that on this this part of the if because these are two if sequences so I put an else for this that not found equals true on the event that if this returned false I also want to set this to true um, so it'll go through everything in the B database and if it doesn't find it anywhere or you know there's other uh, other problems and so it returns not found anyway um, then what it's going to do is if not found equals true at the end of this function it returns false um, if not found yeah so it return so when you call check database if it returns false it's not in there um, if it returns true it means it found it right okay so now we have add to database this part gets a little tricky first it runs check database um, if it was equal to true then the B was found and it's the turtle sucks the, sucks it out of the analyzer and then it says value a local value equals the database species and string or I mean and, and class so it's gonna go uh, dil uh, valiant princess and then it finds that it equals one so it assigns value to one right okay now we have so that's that's out of the database so that's what we already had in the database not what the turtle just pulled out so now we're gonna add that to that so value equals value again so the one that was already in the database plus get item count one so it adds the number um, the turtle found the turtle has so now value has the previous data from the database plus what the turtle has in its inventory and then it sets again database species class so uh, for this example valiant princess equals the new value so say I put another princess in there now it'll be two right so we're updating the database otherwise if check database return false and the B was not found the turtle sucks it out now this part gets a little screwy because if the tur if the the B was not found it means that while I can assign um, the species to the the database file here because this I've already established is a table so it's gonna look for an index I have to establish that it's a two-dimensional table because this this part isn't in here right um, so if I don't have a princess class then it's not realizing it's a two-dimensional database yet so what I've got to do here then is you add a table to the species index so for valiant I want to add a new table right now I can actually say okay this is the index for the first table this is now the index for the second table and I want it to equal zero because it's default right um, now this I just did as a placeholder to make sure there was a value here that this this hierarchy has been established 
and this is like the default value, right? Um, I could, in theory, just move this part to here and, and cut out a line, but I prefer doing this because it makes sure that this is working because this line will throw an error if something was wrong. Um, uh, so I, I like doing it this way, but now now that this this basically this line these two lines here establish the hierarchy of adding another table, um, so it's a two dimensional table. Um, so okay, so species class so valiant princess equals two number and value, and as we saw, value equals just oh I skipped that part. Turtle sucks it out, and because the bee wasn't found, it just takes the item count. Um, that's in the turtle and puts it in value and then assigns it to the the two part there and then at the end whether it did one or the other um, then it turns around and dumps the bee into the relay um, so that it will send it on its merry way to the um, the place the place place um, and we're right at that 30 minute mark and so because I haven't actually started talking about these other functions I think I'm going to save it and do another part of the episode and also talk about the other computer part um, and go from there. So I hope you all enjoyed. Um, stick with me and we'll get we'll get through this part and um, it'll all kind of make sense um, in the next episode. So I hope you all enjoyed and hope this helped you guys. Uh, again, not finished yet. Um, we'll go over the rest of the turtle script in the next episode and talk about the computer script and, um, and then hopefully I'll be able to update you guys eventually on what I did to fix the, the computer code. Um, so I'll, uh, if you liked it and you enjoyed and it helped, uh, leave a like and I'll see you all next time. Peace.